in order to help us understand how to use Ionic. What I figured was that since we already have a working Angular application, why not take the steps to port the Angular application into Ionic? We will do it step by step. If you have taken the previous course on um, AngularJS and the other course on Bootstrap, then you have already seen how we constructed the website for our course. So we will take the final version from the previous AngularJS course and then move parts of it into the Ionic application. Those parts that can be reused directly, we're going to reuse them. Those parts that we need to reconstruct, we're going to reconstruct using Ionic's approach. First, we have already have our server up and running using the JSON server. So the data is already being served up by the JSON server. In the previous course, we saw that we were able to construct services that enabled us to, to use the Angular resource to go and fetch the data from the server. And then we were using those resources in the controllers in order to actually access the data. So first thing, since we already have the server running, let me put the services into place and then have the resource, Angular resource, go and fetch the data for us al already. Then we will start putting the controllers into place to be able to serve up the data for our templates. But when we come to templates, we have to redesign all the templates using Ionic's approach. What we used earlier was a combination of HTML and Bootstrap for designing our Angular templates. Now we're going to redesign those templates using Ionic in order to fit the mobile screen. So step by step, let's first get the services into place. Then we'll get the controllers into place. Then we will start working on the templates. So let's go ahead with this exercise next. As our first step in this exercise, you will download the services.js file that I have provided for you. This is the same services file that we used in the Angular application in the previous course. So I'm going to download that file and move it into the JavaScript folder, the JS folder underneath the www folder of our Confusion Ionic app folder. So I am, I am right now in the www folder. I'm going to go into the JS folder and then I'm going to copy or um, paste that services.js file into place there. So once we have that pasted there, then we need to go and fix up the services.js file to be useful for our application here. Once you have copied the services.js file into uh, your uh, folder, then open it up. Now you see that earlier we defined this services.js file with uh, as part of the module confusion app. Now in this um, Ionic app, we have been naming it using confusion dot. So in this case, we're going to name this module as confusion dot services. So this is the Angular module that hosts all the services that are going to be used within our application. Next, we will leave the base URL at the moment as localhost colon 3000. But once you start deploying your application into a mobile device, you will have to change this to the, the you will have to change the local host to the IP address where your server is running. At the moment, we are going to test all of these using our uh, browser, so we don't uh, need to change that yet. But in the next module, when we will look at how you deploy your um, Ionic application to a mobile device, we're going to have to come back and change that. 
hold that thought in your mind. Now, one thing that I am doing is that since I have declared this constant base URL here, there will be one single place where I need to do the update. And anywhere else within my code, if I need to access my server, I'm going to use the base URL as the um, way of accessing my server. The next minor change that you need to do to this Confusion Services is that because Confusion Services is using Angular resource in order to access the server, I need to inject the ng resource module into the Confusion Services Angular module. So let's go ahead and then do the dependency injection here. So we will say um, ng resource here. So now your services is ready for use within your Ionic application. After we have completed this, then we switch to index.html file. And then we need to update the index.html file first to make use of the Angular resource. Second, to include the services.js file into our index.html page. So let's open the index.html page. Here, I have the index.html page open. So in here, after I import the ionic bundle.js file, I'm going to import the angular and then angular resource min.js file. Now, I need to explicitly include the angular resource min.js file in here because the ionic bundle doesn't include that as part of that. What does ionic bundle include? If you are curious, let's go ahead and check that out. If you are curious, go to the library Ionic JS and then open the Ionic bundle.js file. And then you would notice that in the Ionic bundle.js file, it says it is a concatenation of Ionic.js, which is the Ionic's own Angular code, then Angular.js. So that's the reason why we don't need to include Angular.js in our index.html file, angular animate.js, angular sanitize.js, angular ui router.js, and ionic angular.js. All these are concatenated together by this ionic bundle.js. But note that it doesn't include angular resource.js. So that's the reason why I need to explicitly include angular resource.js file. Again, switching back to uh, the index.html file. In addition to the controllers.js here, I also need to include services.js file because that is going to be part of our application. So once we have completed this, the next step is to inject the services module into my Angular module for my application. So to do that, let's open up app.js. Here I have app.js opened up. So in addition to confusion controllers, I would need to inject confusion services. With this, all the things that I need to inject have been done into my main Confusion Angular module. So now my Angular application can make use of the Confusion Services module that we have just incorporated into our project. Now, our services is ready to go and fetch all the data from the server from the JSON server that we have already started. Now, let's update the controllers. 
we had already designed the controllers for all the different pages, all the different templates in the Angular course. I'm going to simply go and copy and paste all the controller code from that course into the controllers.js file here. So let's open up controller.js file. So inside the controller.js file, you see that at the moment it contains a controller named app control, yeah, app CTRL. I'm going to leave it as such there. We will make use of that for our application. So this will be the overall application controller. In addition, it contains these two controllers called playlist control and play, uh, playlists control. I don't need them anymore. So I'm going to replace those two with the controllers that I designed in my AngularJS course. I have already provided you the code for that. Let's copy just the controllers from that controllers.js file that I provide for you and then paste that into here. I'm going to again, I'm going to replace the playlists control and the playlist control in this file. I no, no longer need them. So what I'm going to do next is to select these controllers and then simply replace them with the code of the controllers from my controllers.js file that I used in the Angular application. I don't need to change any of the code. I'm just going to keep all that code that we developed in the previous course as such because every one of those pieces is useful for developing our Ionic application. So you see that I am literally copying and pasting all the code from the previous Angular application that we developed into this. Reuse of code. So now that is where it all stops. The templates have to be completely redesigned because we are depending on Ionic to Dis display the information on the screen. So we have to design the templates using Ionic's CSS and JavaScript classes and also Ionic's own directives for displaying the data. We're going to work on one file at a time, one template at a time, starting with home.html. Now, as we are going through developing our Ionic application, I'm going to always refer you back to the Angular application and look at how we designed the, the various pages within our Angular application, and then perhaps try and reuse part of that information in redesigning my Ionic templates. Now, looking at our home page, we see that we had displayed a dish there. We had displayed the promotions and we had displayed the users there. Now, all these three, when I displayed them in my Angular course, I used the media object of Bootstrap to, to do that. When I come to the Ionic framework, Ionic provides us with a wonderful uh, templating called as cart. This is what we are going to use to format and display this information in our Ionic application. Before we proceed forward, let's open the home.html page. I'm going to bit by bit paste information in here in order to reconstruct our page. And then also I will serve up Ionic serve. I will start up Ionic serve so that you can see the changes as we make in the home.html page. Here, I have already started Ionic serve hyphen hyphen lab at my command prompt. So my Ionic application is being displayed in my browser. Taking a look at the current state of my Ionic application, you can see that it contains the blank home page. We're going to start uh, redesigning this page to be somewhat like the home page that we had for our Angular application. Here I have 
the home.html page open. What I'm going to do is go into the ion content here. I'm going to remove that H1 from there. Actually, because the name of the restaurant is already there in the header bar, I don't really need to display that. And the Jumbotron that we used in our um, uh, home page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to design a splash screen for my Ionic application. And that will show up on the screen when the user starts the, the Ionic application. We'll do that later. I will only design the part to show the content in the home page. So to do that, I'm going to go in here and then introduce a div with the class card here. So I'm going to use the Ionix support for card. If you are familiar with uh, material design from Google, uh, with material design, Google introduced cards for the Android um, UI design. This card that we are using in Ionic is similar to the cards that was introduced in Android. So that's what I'm going to use here because it's a, it's a nice way of displaying information. So I have designed a div called card. Now inside here, I'm going to insert the content. Next, I have pasted in some of the content. Let me explain what I have just pasted in to illustrate how we are making use of the CSS classes that are provided by Ionic. So here I have a div with a class called item item divider. And then inside there, I am specifying this. I am our lip smacking culinary creations. And then I have specified a batch. Now, Ionic doesn't have a label. Ionic only has a batch. So I'm going to make use of the badge with Ionic. Now, for a badge in Ionic, I can even specify something called badge assertive. And that, uh, you know, um, puts a background for the badge in a red color. So I am sort of simulating what I did with Bootstrap's label here by using this uh, badge and badge assertive here. I have put the dish label here. And then for the next one, uh, the div, I have specified class item, item thumbnail left, item text wrap. When I say item, an item thumbnail left. So this is an item in, uh, so the card class is like a list class in um, uh, in Ionic. So uh, whatever you put in there as items will be displayed as items in, you know, sort of the simulator list. You will see the result in a short while. So in here, I have specified the item. Item thumbnail left means that if I include a s image inside this div, that image will be displayed on the left side as a thumbnail. Uh, so that's what I am using to uh, to leverage displaying an image in there. And then after that, I include an H2 with the dish name. Remember from Angular, when I say dish.name, that's the name property of the dish JavaScript object that has been mapped onto the scope there. And then below that, I have the span class with badge, which I am dis displaying the dish price uh, filtered with currency. And then below that, I have the uh, P tag with the dish description there. Now with this modification to the um, home.html page, Let's go and look at what it displays on the user interface for our application. Going to your application, you're seeing the creation of this nice card-like structure there. All this is empty right now because I haven't attached the controller yet. So I need to go in and edit the app.js file to attach the controller. Not only that, I need to fix some things in the controller. And then also you see that the title is displayed here. Let's go and fix the controllers.js file and also the app.js file so that the content is 
correctly displayed here. Going to the app.js file, for the app home state, I am going to add the controller as index controller. Remember from the Angular course that that's the controller that we used for our home page. So we add the index controller. Now let's go to the controllers.js file. Now in the controllers.js file, we will move to the index controller that is defined here. Now this index controller is getting all the information from the service in the backend. So we have already injected the manufacturing service. Now I also mentioned the fact that your base URL also needs to be used. So I am going to inject the base URL also into uh, my um, controller here. So let me inject base URL into my controller here. And also after the corporate factory, I should say base URL. And on my scope, I'm going to declare a uh, variable named base URL, which will be equated to base URL. So that way the base URL constant string that I define is going to be supplied through the scope to my template because I need to make use of that in my template. So with this change, now when you specify the image to be downloaded, in this application, all the images will be downloaded from the server. We don't want to include the images of the dishes into our application because we might be changing the menu items on the server side. And so we want all the images to be downloaded from the server when it is required. But our application is running locally on our own machine. With Angular, we didn't have that problem because with Angular, when you specified a relative URL, by default, Angular assumes that this URL is referring to the server plus the URL. But with Ionic, you need to explicitly state where to go and fetch that data. So that's why I need to add also the base URL of my server to my code here. So now I have got the base URL onto my scope. Then I will go into my code and then fix the image uh, part of the code there to be able to go and fetch the data from the server, to fetch the image from the server. So switching back, to, so with this changes to the controller, then we will switch back to home.html. And then the image here, you notice that I have already specified the ng source as base URL plus dish dot image. The dish dot image gives me the relative URL of the image corresponding to that server. But in Ionic, I also need to specify the server URL explicitly. So that's why I add the base URL to that. One important thing that I should remem re remember to remind you is that when you specify the order of these uh, dependency injections here, you make sure that the order that you specify here matches the exact order in which you specify the parameters that you're giving here. So the base URL should be the last one here and the base URL should be the last one here also. I had a minor error there, which I, I had put the base URL in front of corporate factory. And so my code was not working correctly. So I have corrected that. So this is exactly how it should be designed. You see, even I encounter errors when I am doing the exercises. And so with that change, then we will um, 
go and have a look at the resulting web page. Now, if you go and have a look at the app, you will see that the information is properly displayed. You now have the information in the form of cards. And then you have the, notice how the badge is being displayed with the information there. And then notice how the price is being displayed here. So this is one usage of Ionix CSS classes in order to display the information like this. Now, the same thing we're going to apply for displaying the promotions and the leadership information. So I'm going to paste that uh, code for the remaining two also, and then we'll review that code in home.html, and then we'll come back and look at the resulting uh, application at that point. Switching back to home.html page, I have now pasted the content for the promotion. So I have a second card here inside which I again am using the item divider and with the this month's promotion and then the badge as uh, we used earlier and then the div class item thumbnail. So this is exactly the same as the first code except I am here now displaying the information for the promotion. And then the last one, the last card is for displaying the culinary specialists. So we have our culinary specialists information being displayed here using the item divider and then the item thumbnail here. So with this changes, let's go and see the resulting application. Moving to our application, you now see that our home page is now well designed with three cards, one displaying the um, featured dish, the other one displaying the promotions, and the third one displaying our chef information here. So now with this change, we have completed updating the home.html page. In this exercise, we have now gone one step further. We are now able to use the services to fetch the data from the server, and then we are uh, we have designed the controllers and then attached them to the home uh, page in our app.js file. And then we are able to redesign our template using the Ionix CSS classes to be able to display the information within our Ionic application. So this completes this exercise. In the next exercise, we're going to carry on with this approach to update the remaining parts of our Ionic application.